All right, everybody. How's everyone doing today? I know it's what a great conversation we just had with Sam Webb. Thank you again, Sam, for taking the time to be involved with our event. And we definitely posted some notes and we posted a link to his TED talk in the commentary if you look at the, the chat. So it should be really good. So we have, we're not done. We still have a couple more sessions. We actually have four more programs. I know, is that crazy? Is it just me or is this event going by really fast, right? It's, it's super just humbled and excited that, uh, you know, everyone is staying involved and shout out again to the organizers behind this conference, um, Republic Peak Mindful in particular, uh, Sandra, uh, Justin, Gabriella, and Sophia, you all are crushing it. And um, we're definitely going to have some more fun still. So Navjo Daliwal is our next productivity coaching session. She's going to do a very cool program called Blending Purpose and Productivity. So I've had the pleasure of working with her for several years now. And her understanding of yoga, wellness, and mindset and other areas around what it takes to be the best version of yourself from inside out is just amazing. And so I'm going to pass it to her in a sec. Here's some things that you're going to learn from this conversation today. The power of alignment and breath work that will change your life. Hopefully, you'll get this as a productivity hack so you could be more mindful in your everyday life so that you can have clarity in times of stress and turmoil. And of course, Navjot will do a demonstration. So you, in a way, you're going to get a take-home exercise to use. And Navjot is the first of two, um, actually three, I should say, more uh, exercise-driven, uh, performance-driven kind of productivity sessions. We actually have... Um, Chris down the road and Tiff down the road at, um, to talk about their things from yoga and HIIT training and, and whatnot. So yeah, let me pass the mic to Navjot and we'll get started. Thanks everyone. Rev whenever you are ready, Navjot. Hello everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Got the yes from Gabriella. That's my girl. Hello, everyone. My name is Navjot Thaliwal, just like how Ash said. And I have been on my journey of self-development for about 10 years now. And I recently started coaching about a year ago. So I do self-development coaching. I do abundance or law of attraction coaching. And what I really love to do is corporate wellness coaching because I see this huge shift happening right now where people are working their corporate jobs or even if they work at startups, basically nine to five setups, right? Which is now all indoors due to our, uh, you know, indoor quarantine. So I really want to talk about purpose and productivity because I really feel like there was a huge shift in my life when all of my productivity towards work was blended in with purpose because I was no longer living in autopilot, right? So I feel like what autopilot is kind of like when you wake up in the morning, you're not that excited to go to work. Um, maybe, you know, you don't have a good relationship with your boss. There could be so many different reasons, right? Right. Of why we don't get excited for work. Maybe we don't feel a purpose. Maybe when we got hired on, you know, they hyped us all up with their mission statement and they made us feel purposeful. Um, and then slowly, you know, as the years went on, maybe you started to lose that purpose. So what I really want to talk about is, um, how that affects productivity. So when you feel like you don't have purpose in the work that you're doing, your productivity goes lower. And in that sense of not that you're not going to get all your things done in the day, you probably will get all your things done in the day, but it's going to suck, right? You're not going to have that much fun doing what you're doing. Your passion isn't going to be there. You're not going to feel a purpose. It's going to feel like you're just a robot trying to get through the day. Has anybody, can anybody relate to that? If you can, please uh, say something in the chat box. I love interactive conversations. So uh, just to let you guys know, this is an open discussion. So please share if you guys are picking up anything that I'm putting down here. So whenever we are feeling that low purpose, our productivity does go lower, right? Because we've also felt, like I said, right, when we sign on with a company, we feel so of purpose, we feel so eager to learn, eager to grow. And then your productivity is just like, it's just easy, right? It's just you're get, going through your day, you're having, you're having so much excitement doing every project that you're doing. Even if it is a challenging product, product, project, you can um, totally feel productive and happy and positive. And someone just, just said something really interesting. So I wanted to 
look at that. Uh, it can't just be a job. Exactly. We don't want to feel like we're working, right? I was just talking to one of my clients the other day who's going through a career shift and we were talking about purposeful work versus just working to get a paycheck. It can't just feel like a job, right? I think we were in elementary school when people used to come and speak, uh, right? And say, if you uh, love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And I always stuck to that when I was a kid. And so growing up, I was never really, I never really understood the, the purpose behind doing something meaningless just for, for a job, just for a paycheck. Um, and, and that's where I think really where things are shifting because we've seen this high level of chronic stress in corporate environments. If you look up who takes the most Xanax, right, or prescription meds for anxiety, for depression, it's most likely people that work corporate jobs or blood pressure medication, right? That is an outward reflection of years and years and years of working this um, non-purposeful living, right? And so this also ties in and it goes into the rest of your life. Because if you think about it, we're working 40 hours a week in America, right? That's considered full time. And uh, if you're an entrepreneur, you know, sometimes it's even more. And you want to make sure that those 40 hours a week are being um, being used in such a, in a great productive way, because that's when you go out, you know, once you clock out, once you check out of work time, you don't want any of that to flood into your personal life. You don't want to project it onto your family and friends. You don't want to have to, um, you know, cope using, using alcohol or using, um, using drugs. You want to find some way that you could cope, uh, in a healthy manner. And that's kind of what I love teaching my clients especially my corporate clients. And I see it being blended more into corporate environments now. Now I see a lot of HR um, departments looking for employee wellness, which I think is beautiful because it is the preventative measures, right? It's the preventative so that you don't have to get to that point where you need to go see uh, you know, a doctor. I mean, I'm talking more psychiatry uh, for prescribed medications, right? Um, I, I definitely think everybody should reach out to a therapist or a life coach. I think we all could benefit from one, regardless if we're happy with our jobs or not, right? We all need someone to kind of release and uh, in a healthy way too. So how can we level up our purpose, right? So what is the solution to this problem? Purpose comes from within, right? So whatever job that you have, right? First of all, it, it's, it, the solution can be from the leaders, right? Or from within yourself. So for leaders out there, for managements out there, please um, look into ways that you can invest into your employees' wellness. Because like I said, in the beginning, you get them all hyped up. Uh, they're so excited to work there. The mission statement is so, you know, ingrained in their, in their spirit at that point, you know, on top of in their brains and in their, emotion, in their emotions as well. They're emotionally connected to the job as well as logic and all the other beautiful things that we have as human beings. Um, so if you as a leader have disconnected from your mission, from your mission statement, from your purpose, that energy is actually going to flow into your employees. So that is why I feel like at the leader level, it is where, um, it is where we can amplify our purpose and find those solutions. On the second level, on the employee level, there are things that each employee could be doing, right, in order to find more purpose in the work that they have. Right now, due to COVID-19, right? We are just so blessed to have work in general. And if anybody's watching this that doesn't have work or is looking for a career change, know that anything is possible, even regardless of the times. All you have to do is pay attention to the times, see where the trends are going, right? And know that you can blend purpose and productivity into whatever that you do, whatever thing it is that you do. Um, so if you're already in a situation where you're at a job and you're losing your productivity, you're losing your focus, you're losing your momentum, you're kind of just dragging along in autopilot. The way you can blend purpose into your work is remember what you do. How does what you do serve others, right? What exactly is your role in this company? And think about all the traits that you have of why you got hired there, right? You need to amplify, right? That's what I think is that you need to amplify your personal traits, your gifts and your talents and remember why you started working there in the first place. Another way is to definitely incorporate some healthy stress relief. So healthy stress relief is going to be done through breath work. It's going to be done through taking herbs, right? I can never say that something can 
cure you, but I can give you recommendations with my background in herbal medicine, um, just from working and trying different things uh, on the holistic route, what you can also ingest if you need to take something to, to you know, get the edge off that's not alcohol um, or other things that you use. So one thing that I love is breath work, like how Ash mentioned earlier, and somebody just asked a question, which I think is uh, perfect with what I'm talking about right now. It says, any recommendation on how to share our day with family without exposing them to the stresses of your day? Yes, definitely. So the way that we can do that, right? Because it is important for us to share and uh, release things verbally. So the way that we can do that is kind of set up the conversation with your family, with your children in a way with emotional intelligence. When you have emotional intelligence, even if you had the most stressful day ever, even if I had the worst day ever, I know that I have emotional intelligence. So I can go up to whoever it is that I might not normally project to, right? Let's just say it's my sister who I'm very close with. Um, I can, you know, if she's needing me that night or evening or day that I just had a really crappy day, I'm going to tell her, I'm going to give her this precursor, right? This setting up the space, right? This is what they call space setting. So you're going to set up the space to where she knows in exactly. And you have that compassion to share with her as well. It's a compassion on both ends that this is where you're at right now, right? So, hey, sis, I know that you need me to do this right now, but I am just going to let you know in ahead of time that right now I'm not in the best emotional, maybe physical, uh, mental, and spiritual state right now. I'm feeling very low. I will do the best I can to help you because I do love you, but just know that right now I'm not at my best, so I cannot perform at my best right now. However, you know, I'm going to be okay. I know I'm going to be okay. It's just right now I'm not okay. And that's okay for me not to be okay, right? Because I think a lot of the times we try to um, suppress our negative emo emotions and that's really when they start to bottle up inside and we end up projecting, right? And sending that negative energy into the universe and into our lives. And then it bleeds into all parts of our lives, like I said, because we are multidimensional beings, everything is interconnected. So I hope that answers your uh, question. And um, it's all about setting space, you know, setting up the space and emotional intelligence. And please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my LinkedIn link was there, or you can follow me on Instagram and message me on there, metaphysical underscore goddess. And just to end here, uh, because I know, oh, I have 10 minutes, beautiful. So um, before I share this breath work, I just kind of want to share what this breath work can really do for you. So. Like I said earlier, I teach law of attraction, right? In a very practical way. Yes, it is magical, but you have to include the practical in order for you to actually amplify your life and manifest the things that you would like. Sometimes we manifest physical things, right? Job, um, a lover, career, um, a car, a house. We are all worthy to manifest those things. Other times we're manifesting the internal stuff, manifesting patience manifesting emotional awareness, manifesting um, confidence, right? Let's say you have a meeting to go to. Let's say you have an important call for work. You need to manifest some confidence before you go into that room, into that situation. And it really doesn't have to take that long. You can literally just take five to 10 minutes with the right tools. And, um, and once your emotional intelligence just starts building, it takes even less than that. Sometimes I do say an affirmation just because I've practiced enough to where I can literally tune in to that infinite source that, you know, you're tapping into within when we manifest and you can tune into it at any time. And that is the true blessing behind it. Um, so the, the breath work that I'm sharing today is called Nadi Shadana. Nadi Shadana is a breath work exercise from India. And what it does is it balances your left and right hemispheres of the brain. So I know Sam Webb earlier um, before this conversation, he talked about balancing, uh, you know, being able to cry, you know, as a man, right? And, and how that has turned so toxic, right? Toxic masculinity is when you don't allow yourself to share emotions. Um, so you balance that with divine femininity, femininity, which is sharing your emotions and, uh, and knowing that it's okay. And the one thing that I want to share before I talk about divine feminine, divine masculine, we all have this within us. It has nothing to do with gender or sex or um, your, your autonomy. 
if you have a brain right now, you have both divine feminine and masculine qualities. So the left side of our brain is ruled by logic, right? This is basic biology. This is basic psychology, um, even chemistry, you know, um, the, even the hormones, right, that, that are produced here compared to the hormones produced here. So our left brain is ruled by logic. So logic, productivity, action, right? When you think of, I need to get from A to B, whether it's in your business, whether it's even just physical things like going to the store, you, you have this logical sense of, yes, if I do this, this, and this, then I can get from A to B on the logical standpoint. Toxic masculinity is when you overwork your logic and you get burnt out. That's a sign of toxic masculinity is when you're burnt out. You're being overly productive. You're being overly active. You're running yourself dry. You're running yourself thin. That is the definition of burnout, which is one of the most biggest epidemic happening right now in corporate America. So like I said, it's it's not a, a thing of like one's better or the other. No matter how spiritually awakened you get, you're still going to experience those toxic aspects because we're human. So because we're human, um, there, there are ways that we can, you know, take those toxic masculine traits and uh, come back into divine uh, femininity or use divine femininity to balance a toxic masculine because the end goal or whatever we want to call it um, is to balance both the divine masculine and the divine feminine. So getting into divine feminine, that is going to be your right side of your brain, which is ruled by creativity. By the way, the right side of the brain is creativity, love, emotion, um, right? And emotional awareness. And this rules the left side of your body. So what's on the left side of your body, your heart, so this is living from your heart, right? So when they say you have a courageous heart, when you're out of your head and you're into your heart, this is a, a tool that we use often in yoga. So, um, so left side of the left side of the brain rules the right side of the body, right? Which is that action, that logic. The right side of the brain rules the, the left side of the body, which is your emotional intelligence, your creativity, and uh, your intuition, right? Our sixth sense, which is really cool. Um, so when both are in balance, that is when we are at homeostasis, right? Um, and toxic femininity, I'll go into that as well. So toxic femininity is when you are overworking that emotional side, right? It is when you start to get into uh, a deep fixation into one emotion. So a deep fixation of unmotivatedness and sadness is depression. A deep fixation of being worried, right? Fear, uh, uh, overactive fight or flight that is a fixation which leads to anxiety. So that is what the right side of the brain rules. And you can balance toxic femininity with divine masculinity. That's why they say if you're depressed, I know everything in the world is telling you not to get out of bed in the morning, but the one thing that will help you to get out of that depression, even 5%, is to activate some of your left brain, the divine masculinity, which is action. So get up, move your body. That's why a lot of people work out for mental health, not just for uh, physical health, because after a workout, you know, you're in your body, you're not, you're not living in your emotions, right? You're more in your body and you're moving and you're getting those endorphins in. It's all really connected with science too, which is so cool. I love nerding out on this stuff. Um, anyway, so I would love to go deeper uh, with this with any of you that are watching. So please reach out to me. Um, like I said, my Instagram is metaphysical underscore goddess. You can reach out to me there or on my LinkedIn, which uh, is provided here. And if Gabby, you're still watching, if you could just point, uh, type in my Instagram there, that would be so lovely. And I'd be so grateful um, just so I could dive into this breath work now. Thank you so much. So this breath work exercise is actually called Nadi Shodana and it is alternate nostril breathing. And it physically um, and emotionally and spiritually balances the left and right hemispheres of your brain. So this is what you do. You're going to take your right hand. You're going to put down your peace fingers. So these two fingers, they're going to be down on your thumb mound. So now you have your thumb, your uh, ring finger, and your pinky finger out. Your left hand is going to be in Gyana Mudra, which is the mudra of um, knowledge and wisdom, and then connecting it to yourself. So knowledge and wisdom, and then connecting it to yourself. The left hand is just going to chill face up on your left thigh. Your right hand is going to be doing all the work here. So basically what you're gonna do, you're gonna sit up nice and tall. Let's go ahead and close our eyes. Take three deep breaths. Deep breath in through your nose, fill yourself up. Just like a balloon, 
And exhale, let it go. Belly button comes back in towards your spine. Two more. Inhale, breathe everything in. Let it go. Last one on your own. All right, and then gently open your eyes just so you could see how we're gonna do this breath work. Basically, you're gonna take your thumb, exhale everything from both nostrils, plug your right nostril with your thumb, deep inhale through your left nostril, Hold, plug your left nostril with your ring finger. Exhale from your right nostril. Deep breath in from your right nostril. Hold, plug your right nostril with your thumb. Exhale, left nostril. Feel free to close your eyes and find your rhythm here. Inhale, left nostril. Slight pause as you plug your left nostril. Exhale, right nostril. I want you to do five of these on your own. So inhale, right. I'll start you guys off. Plug the right. Exhale, left. Just like this, four more. Each side counts as one. Slowly release your concentration. Gently open your eyes. And typically I like to do that one for about 11 rounds, or I will set a timer on my phone for five minutes and do it for five minutes straight. I don't know about you guys, but I already feel the balance. <laughs> Comment if you guys feel it too, uh, just with those few, you know, I think we probably did seven or eight max. Um, but like I said, five minute timer on your phone, do it for five minutes straight. You guys will really feel that balance that clarity, uh, totally zen out. I love it, Justin. Just make sure you connect with me, man. I really like your energy. Um, and, and I'm glad that you felt it. And um, and yeah, so that's basically what it is. You know, if I could pretty much encompass productivity and purpose in 20 minutes, that's, that's it, y'all. You know, I did it. <laughs> I hope that got you excited, motivated, uh, and provided a little bit of insight and value. Um, and if it did, uh, please reach out to me. Like I said, I just love connecting with people and uh, showing them ways how to live better and um, live stronger. And as they say, live your best life. So thank you so much for joining me. I am eternally grateful for each and every one of you who tuned in and for those who are watching the pre-recording. Um, <laughs> yes, live your best life. I'll pass the mic back over to you, Ash, and everyone have a really blessed rest of your day.